direction. I want to talk to you today a little bit about the oil spill down in the Gulf of Mexico. Not about how much is being poured out every day or about the state of the cleanup in that aspect of it, of plugging up the hole, or the politics behind it, or what BP is saying. If you want that information, there's plenty of videos out there, there's plenty of information on the internet that you can find that. I want to talk a little bit about the use of dispersants that BP is using to try and break up the oil spill. Uh, I myself, when I first thought of dispersants, I was thinking, yeah, okay, they're breaking up the oil, but that's just going down into the ocean. That's going to kind of mess things up, won't it? So I went and looked, at, looked up a lot more information on it. There are quite a few microorganisms that will eat oil, and it does so on a natural basis. The biggest one of these is called uh, Alcanivorax borcumensis. Big fancy name for little microbe. But this, along with a couple dozen others, will eat hydrocarbons, or oils, uh, on a regular basis. Oil does seep up from the seabed from time to time, and these microbes just eat it up and turn it into harmless byproducts that can be used by other animals as building, as, as building blocks for other things. The alcanivorax can produce its own surfactants, or dispersants, if you will. Basically what a surfactant is, is a molecule that has two sides on it. One side is a polar head, this side loves water. The other side is a hydrocarbon tail, and this side doesn't like water. They occur in nature all over the place, they're in, in every single one of your cell membranes in your body. But because this configuration of having a water-loving head and a water-hating tail, they can form what's called a micelle. Whenever there's a hydrocarbon that is in water, they don't mix. Oil will float on top of water. We're pretty familiar with that. When you put in something that has these two head groups, the polar end can line up with the water, and the tail can line up with the oil. And because of this, they can form like a coating around an oil that will cause it to be able to be in water in very small droplets. The whole idea of using a dispersant is that it is a surfactant. So they can spray it on the oil, and this should allow it to form very small micelles. The alcanivorax produces its own surfactant. So it's able to take and break up small amounts of oil into even smaller ones, then bind to it and digest it. All of the other couple dozen microbes that will eat oil can't actually produce surfactants, but when the oil is, a little globule of oil is small enough, they can digest it. So, I'm going to show you a little bit about how this works. I have here's a pickle jar with some water in it, and we're going to add some oil. And yeah, it's not crude oil, but it gets the point. So if you put oil in, it forms droplets and beads, and no matter how you shake it around, it may form little small drops in it, but they'll always come back out of the water. Surfactant is a lot like soap. Soap is a type of surfactant. So we're going to use, and you notice it's sticking to the side where there isn't water, and it's sticking to each other, but it won't disperse into the water. One of our favorite surfactants, Dawn dish soap. You put a little bit of that in there. And I'm going to put the lid on here too. And you shake it around. and it actually goes into the water a lot better. If you have enough surfactant and enough motion, and if you think about ocean, the ocean is a wave machine. This is actually how soap works. It is a bipolar material. It gets around grease, binds onto it, and allows it to dissolve in the water. And I hope you can see that well enough. There is no longer an oil layer on top. If we allow it to settle, there will still be some little glob. Go there will still be some blobs of oil around in there, but they're much smaller, and they're not trying to go back into that big uh, 
mass of oil that there was before. This is how oil dispersants work. And the idea is that they had is if you can break up these little break up the big mass of oil into these little tiny masses, then those other couple dozen microbes will actually be able to digest the oil. Um, the problem comes in that the dispersant they're using does have some toxic chemicals in it. It may do damage, not proven, it could do damage to shrimp and fish or other aquatic life. When the dispersant was developed, which Core Exit is the name of the dispersant that BP is currently using. When it was developed, it's developed to go on a small oil slick, break it up, maybe even something the size of Exxon Valdez, but it was never made for this extreme mass of oil. The oil breaks up and it'll sink down into the water and the microbes are supposed to eat it, but there's a lot of toxins that are being concentrated by this much core exit being put on the put on the spill. So the worry is that's going to actually cause more harm than good. There's also a worry by scientists now of whether or not this dispersant is going to make it easier or harder for the microbes to eat the oil. There's some debate about that. So right now there's a lot of res uh, there is a focus a few researchers are going out and the national government has just approved one scientist at least with over a hundred thousand I think it was hundred and ten or hundred thirty thousand dollar grant to explore whether this this uh, this person is actually helping or hurting with the digesting of microbes when I logged on to YouTube today I saw that there was an option to go see the spill live and to submit your ideas about how to clean the spill up not a bad idea if you can think of something to help out. A lot of people have been trying. I've seen videos on YouTube about using straw or using different chemicals and microorganisms. There are lots of ideas out there. Throughout history there have been some ideas that at the time seemed too simple to be true, but they ended up working. So there's always a possibility that your idea might work. So it's nothing wrong with submitting an idea and trying to have somebody say, you know, that just might work. Pick it up, research it. Somebody may come up with a great way to do something, and it started with a simple idea. You might have noticed my shirt. This is actually a molecule of vancomycin. It's a very strong antibiotic. It's used to kill MRSA. And it's just, if you saw molecules of other antibiotics, they're normally very, very small compared to this. And the name vancomycin actually came because it was considered the vanquisher. So it made a really cool, nerdy t-shirt. Um, if you're interested, there is a link on, I guess it's down there, there is a link to the store where you can buy the shirt. I imagine it's only going to be my fellow nerds buying this shirt. I plan to have other designs out later that may be of a little more universal appeal.